Decimals in place value. So far, we've stopped division when the divisor was larger than the remainder. For instance, in this problem that we did earlier, when we reached a remainder of 12 and our divisor was 15, we stopped dividing and we just stated the remainder, either as the letter R followed by the remainder or by creating a fraction with the remainder over the divisor. We will now explore adding zeros to the dividend to continue the division. Adding zeros does not change the value of the dividend, if done correctly, since the identity property of addition states that adding zero has no effect on the value of a number. To do it correctly, when we add zeros, we also need to add a decimal point and put those zeros to the right of it. We'll see why a few slides from now. It has to do with place value. Bringing down that zero changes 12 to 120. We then just continue as we did before, seeing how many times 15 can divide into 20. 15 goes into 120 exactly eight times, so we write the eight above that zero. We must also bring up the decimal point directly up from where it is in the dividend. Therefore, 357 divided by 15 is 23.8. We now have three ways to state the answer to this division. They must all have the same value. Let's explore how to interpret numbers to the right of the decimal point. Each digit in a number has a value determined in part by where it is located in the number. Moving to the right, each place has a value that is one-tenth the value of the place immediately to its left. These are the first four place values we've been using so far. Thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. Moving one place to the right from the thousands, we have the hundreds, which has one-tenth the value. This is repeated from the hundreds to the tens to the ones. We use these place values to understand a number like 3,456. We now continue that pattern beyond the decimal point, which marks the boundary between integers and numbers with values less than 1. Every time you move one place to the right, the value of that place decreases by a factor of 10. So we move from ones to tenths, hundredths, and then thousandths. Places to the left of the decimal point end in s, and those to the right end in ths. The zero we added to 357 in the prior problem makes it 357.0. That was adding zero tenths, which does not change its value. But when we get our quotient, we need to indicate that last digit of eight represents eight tenths, yielding an answer of 23 and eight tenths. As you look at the place value chart, as you go to the right, each place has a value that is one-tenth of the value of its place to the left. As you look at the place value chart as you go to the left, each place has a value that is ten times the value of its place to the right. To read decimal numbers, we read the number to the left of the decimal, then say AND for the period, then read the number to the right of the decimal, and state the place value of the last digit. Therefore, this number is read as, so here's the decimal, so this is the number to the left. So we have three places there, three more. All right, so we're in the million place value here. 9,875,610 and 479 thousandths. Remember, the place values after the decimal point start with tenths. To convert fractions into decimals, just use long division. Divide the numerator by the denominator. Example 1, 3 fourths. So we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Now 4 does not go into 3, so therefore we're going to add a decimal and then a 0. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28, with a remainder of 2. Now we have a remainder of 2, so let's add another 0 and bring it down. 4 goes into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. We now no longer have a remainder. The last step is to take this decimal and move it up. So 
So the answer is 0.75. And here is your answer, 0.75. Example two, six fifths. So that is six divided by five. Well, five goes into six one time. One times five is five with a remainder of one. So let's add a zero, bring the zero down. Five goes into 10, two times. Two times five is 10. All right, zero, so we're done. Last step, bring that decimal up. The answer is 1.2. And here's the answer, 1.2. Example three, 10 20 fifths. So we're gonna divide 10 by 25. Now 25 does not go into 10, so we're immediately going to add a zero right there, add a decimal, and then a zero. 25 goes into 100 exactly four times. Four times 25 is 100 with no remainder. The answer is 0 0.4. All right, we have to bring that decimal up. And here is the answer, 0 0.4.